My name's Chris. And I'm Christy. This is the Washing Up Podcast. We're back. Woo-hoo. And it's MasterChef Australia season, so... Because we're hot and we're cold. <laughs> Katy Perry will want a royalty. Uh, She'll want a royalty. I don't want to we, we need sound like music. She dances really awkwardly. You know what we need? What? We need that Ukraine. I mention it all the time. That Ukrainian polka band that does the <laughs> version of it. Yes. Yo, change your mind. <laughs> like a girl. Change your clothes. No. Which is appropriate because it's almost like Eurovision on MasterChef. It Chef has become like a bit Eurovision-ish. So, so for those of you who have never listened to us, we're sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm not. No, we're not. We're, we, we, for those who have never listened to us before, we do MasterChef Australia and also the Great Australian and Great British Bake Off. So to the Bake Off crew, how Hello. are we going? And to those of us who listened last year, great to have you back. And if you're a new listener, great Welcome to have aboard. you join us. And don't um, worry, you'll get it. Yeah, uh, just a heads up, uh, not safe for work at all. I'm prone to slip in words like felching. Um, <laughs> it happens a lot. It does. So, you know, this is not for the nonners, not for the the weak-hearted nonners out Everything there. Everything else about this episode was for the nonners. Yes. Uh, this podcast? Not so much. Not so much, not so much about the nonners. So, <laughs> so we started off, before we even get into the episode itself, mm. um, those of you on social media, you may have seen, we put out... The 100% unofficial Australian MasterChef drinking game. Which was endorsed by the MasterChef's Twitter account. The Twitter account (laughs) liked it and said, keep up the good work. So now we did this for Bake Off Australia uh, and and those who played along with the Bake Off game, uh, the first night we did it, we hit almost every target before the first ad break and people were saying that they weren't sure their livers could keep up. So um, we do have an outreach number for alcoholics. Yeah, we're, we're, we'll, we'll put that at the bottom um, of the podcast in case you need us. And and another suggestion is um, something I'm trying and trying not to forget as I'm watching the show is substituting alcohol for like a push up. Unfortunately, with the amount of nonnas, um, just just too many push ups there. There's, there's push ups all over the place. You can yeah. be really fit. <laughs> so and guns of steel, guns of steel, and that'll help you then. Apparently, you know, get on MasterChef and like make steak for people. Yeah, and we'll talk right. about we'll talk about him in a moment. So, mm. so we started off with a bit of a garden party to celebrate the ten year anniversary. Oh, it was lovely. It was it's lovely. Not, it was a parade of all the old Master Chef winners. Now, before they even got there, though, there's something far more important we haven't discussed. Mm. What? The Vespa. The Vespa. Now, <laughs> again, people who listened to the show last series know I have a bit of an infatuation with that Vespa. Uh, I like to imagine the story around the Is Vespa. It the same one. Yeah, Is it's it the fair? red. It's the red Vespa. Uh, they've moved it again. Oh, because um, it's usually next to the door. I'd like to think that the parking tickets now are just sort of, you know, they come along every series and just scrape the parking tickets off it. And they're gonna, there's a Sherpa who carries the tickets back to the office. Um, it's, it's Trent. <laughs> it's Trent, yes. It's Trent. It's Trent. He's still there. He's no still one noticed. Him. No one noticed. But which Trent is it? It doesn't really no matter. matter. Um, they're both there. Harvey, Harvey and Italian Trent. Yeah. They're both there. They're just sort of lurking in the background. No one's really realised yet. <laughs> so they had this bit of a garden party. They come out, they do their big, hey, welcome, 10 years, woo! Everyone cheers everything they say. Mm. That won't get annoying at all. No, no. Um, it's 10 years, so, you know, we had to do X. Woo! It's 10 years, we had to do Y. Woo! And it wouldn't be our 10th ep- uh, what's it called, season if it wasn't for blah. Woo! But, yeah. and, and it's like when Aldo later on pulled out the octopus and he put the octopus out and everyone went, yeah! And it's like... He took an ingredient out of a bag. <laughs> I would be that excited. It's not, there, a, not an achievement. <laughs> I would be that excited. There. What I loved is George is like, there he gets up, he goes, oh, here we go, you know, um, got to calm your nerves. We've got the um, the old Master Chef winners here <laughs> to help you calm down while you're cooking. I'm like, yeah, because none of us would be shitting ourselves cooking in front oh my of Master Chef winners. Oh, my God. Elaine Duggan, Adam Leo, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Adam Leo was just lurking <laughs> over my shoulder. Julie's just there high-fiving me, <laughs> comparing my trembling hands to hers. It's just, Kate, show, show me your hands. Show me your hands. Yeah, there's um, Kate hugging my nonna. It's fine <laughs> if I had a nonna. <laughs> if you had a nonna. nonna. Um, isn't it a song? If I had a nonna, nonna. I'd nonna all the evening. Oh, we should write that for our next Eurovision intro. <laughs> there we go. If I had a nonna. nonna if I had a nonna. So, so... They brought all the past winners in, and what I really enjoyed on behalf of all the old winners was they all made Diana walk in carrying the trophy with her arms above her head. Oh, and 
How many times did they have to do that? I like the idea they needed angle. Struggle Street there. Yeah, by, by the end of it, yeah. I'd actually like to think they've made Diana do that for a year. <laughs> It's like the stone of shame, stone of triumph in The Simpsons. She had to walk every around. Every appearance, every mall appearance, every no, cooking no, no, no. show, no, sunrise, no, no. she walks in. In in her home. Yeah. When she gets up in the morning, there's like a camera. <laughs> she must be holding the trophy. If she doesn't hold the trophy up, she's not the champion. She starts losing a dollar out of her prize no, no, no. money. It's like it's like Michael J. Fox in Back to the Future with the photo. Oh, if no, she puts she, the trophy down, does. it starts vanishing. <laughs> Do you think to top it up as well, at the end of the week, she has to hit her a little button and yellow and um, red <laughs> streakers <laughs> come out? Just to really. It's that moment at the end where he starts playing the court, the right court again at the enchantment under yeah. the sea dance, and she suddenly like throws her arms wild up with the trophy above her head. She's got strength again. To tears on my pillow. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we get into the actual episode because they, they did this really long preamble because it's MasterChef and... You get used to really long preambles. And a lot of overproduction and, and a lot of backstory. And they do a lot of talking, followed by George going, but enough of the talking. Well, you yep. could have said that a while ago. Mm-hmm. But we've got two hours to fill here, so enjoy. And and I put down very early on, and one of the things we put down on the on the game card, and I was sure was a Grand Slam, was Nonna's recipe. What I wasn't prepared for <laughs> was leading off with, with a, a Nonna. Nonna. <laughs> right, I wasn't prepared and, and, and if I, I wasn't going to fuck with our heads enough, <laughs> they had to have her mother there. Yes. So it's the nonna's mother. Does that make her mother nonna? Mother nonna. <laughs> so mother nonna. What, like, like mother superior? Mother yeah, nonna? Mother nonna. Or is she the nonna nonna? <laughs> she's a mother nonna, but a nonna nonna. <laughs> she's not the nonna, she's a mother nonna, not the nonna nonna. Yes, she's a mother nonna. Okay. She's a mother nonna. Anyway. So mother nonna is there cheering on the nonna. <laughs> we have a name for an episode Mother, mother nonna. nonna. <laughs> so. So anyway, the mother Nonna is cheering on Nonna. Nonna. Um, and I was really excited. I was like, yeah, they've actually got the fucking Nonna on there going, I'm doing my own recipes, not stealing my Nonna's or my mother's. Re-. No. And, and, and thank you to the wonderful and amazing lettuce lady because. <laughs> Here's this recipe that Nonna had invented. I have invented this recipe. It is my own creation. And she's like, this looks familiar. And reshares a recipe from taste.com.au. Which was the exact recipe. But I get it because it's I like all it. those times when you think you've come up with an invention like today at work, right? I'm like, oh, my God, we could invent an app that does X, Y, and Z. And they're like, yeah, three of those already exist. I'm like, it's well, like, there goes my fortune. It's like, it's like Ringo Starr when he talked about writing songs in the Beatles. And the reason why Ringo never wrote them was he'd sit down and he thought he'd write this original thing and he'd come back and it's a Chuck Berry standard. <laughs> And he just rewritten it, and they're like, "That's Chuck Berry's song." He's like, "Oh damn it!" Walk away. Sounds dead at. <laughs> Comes back and rewrites it. Yeah. So the nonna got through. Look, there oh, was never a, absolutely there was, deserved. There was never a challenge for her, her getting through. Bono, you could taste that through the screen. Now, now you're going to learn very quickly. It's early, okay? For the first her, week and a half. I think her name's Gina. For the first week and a half, I'm going with Gina the nonna. It sounds sounds yeah. right. For the first week and a half. We're barely going to know who the hell we're talking about, but mm. nobody does. No, like, no. There's always lovable nicknames. There's always people in the 24 that, you know, when you get to the end and everyone comes back and mm. they're all up on the gantry cheering and you're like, oh, yeah, it's, it's – and you're naming people and you're like, and that guy with the hair <laughs> and – him, the guy who looks a little bit like a hobo. I just, I it's like him. Dexter, who was up next, you know, just this fucking crime scene on oh, a plate. Oh, splat. Now, now, that was a lot of effort for... He was named not... as Reese, and for the get this fans <laughs> out there, it's too soon, Reese. But anyway. Yeah, for a splat, it's too, too soon. <laughs> I heard somebody, I heard somebody, um, well, someone didn't hear somebody, somebody tweeted um, out that it, looked, it didn't look more like a splat. It looked a little bit more like a, a splodge. A splodge it was, not a splat. Um, I was waiting for Dexter to come out with, like, the red, like, cords to do the, um, <laughs> the and forensic the producer, analysis. And the producers, the only issue for, for that with the producers was that they, they left the plate in shot where he'd already done, done one. one. And this was apparently the first that we'll see. Here we go. It's the first time he's doing the splat. Look over. There's a plate, the plate with a splat, with splat on, on it. it. <laughs> that he quite, like, even I know how to crop things. <laughs> it's like, just, just treat it like a watermark. Yeah. <laughs> treat it like an artist's watermark. Exactly. Just, just, it's a watermark. Just go with that. That'll work. <laughs> um, we then had, uh, with him though, what we had was what we referred to as Bake Off Guy. 
Yes. Now, we often, you know, we will reference a lot of Bake Off. As we said, that's the other thing we do. And if you don't know Bake Off, this might be an opportunity for you to go back. Yeah, have go a back Foxtel, and check it out. Check it out. It's yeah. pretty cool. You know, if you've, if you've got you know, the, the Foxtel um, Go or whatever they call mm. it now, Foxtel Play, whatever it's called now, Just you can go it. back and watch the series. Go back and rewatch. Yeah. Bake off. It's because you know, if you like the positive vibes of MasterChef which, that's, and people who are actually you know food nerds, you know they're food nerds. It's just more flour based. Yeah, exactly. more flour based. <laughs> and I like I like the way you put that. It's food nerds, just, just flour based, based. Um, except for in um free week. Oh, don't don't start me in free week. <laughs> anyway, so it it became sort of he had a granita. He had a crumb. He's seen this show before. He read a bingo card. Yeah, he he knew. He's he's read what I've got ready for for like later on. He was he was one one square away from a parfait. <laughs> you know? And by the splat, by the way, what he managed to do for us was hit a bingo on the card mm-hmm. because that was something that was really simple that he made look really, really complicated. complicated. So automatically we had one there. They also made him doubt his dish before they said it was good. That was a double drink on the bingo card. It was indeed. So um, he. He really sort of moved it on. We then followed up with the montage of mediocrity. And there were a couple of montages of mediocrity. Yeah. Um, there was, you know, um, all these yeses, though, in the montage of mediocrity. Yeah, it was like it was, the montage of upper middle class mediocrity. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> normally the montage of mediocrity is full of a whole pile of maybes and no's. Yeah, because they featured that woman, Adele, who I remembered her name because she's a fierce fat and, like, Okay, I'm a fat activist, so you can hear me use that word, and it's very, very positive. If I say, oh, my God, she's a fierce fatty, it's because I think that's cool. Anyway, out she comes, this fucking fried chicken, macaroni, cool little thing. I'm like, oh, you're in the montage. Oh, man. So long, sister. And boom, apron. (laughs) Straight through. Yeah, so much yes, Optus is going to (laughs) sue. Probably. (laughs) And then there was the first guy we had begging for a chance. Um, And thankfully... Didn't work. No. I'm I'm going to go into that kitchen and I'm going to try so hard. And you can almost hear them in their heads going, dude, dude. everyone's trying hard. Like, mm. have you not noticed? Like, no, you can't get through on a, oh, I'll, I'll work. A little part of me is kind of like, oh, my God, it's like MasterChef's on board the Me Too movement. Because <laughs> all the people that are like, did you, denied, were like white males. Then one of my favourite moments of the whole episode, mm. we see the second montage start. Yes. And we're watching the second montage, and I, I looked up because I suddenly heard Christy turn and go, Oh my God! It's Cheryl! It's Cheryl! Bake Off represent! So, two seasons ago, Great Australian Bake Off, Cheryl, who is one of the nicest oh people in the my world, gosh. was on. And yeah. know, unfortunately, didn't quite get through on this one. Her, her, her humour came through, though. It was oh. hilarious. The non has come over and gone. <laughs> Mama non has gone, oh, I really wanted you to win. <laughs> she goes, it wasn't that good. It wasn't that good. <laughs> Cheryl is one of the, is, is legitimately one of the nicest people ever, ever. So if you happen to hear this, Shez, good work. Yeah. Nice, nice work. The, the Bake Over MasterChef crossovers continue because mm. for those who don't know, Robert from the last series of, of Great Australian Bake Off a couple of years ago, tried out for, for MasterChef and was on the same bench in his tryout as a certain Elena Duggan. Yes. So. A little bit of, you know, crossover there. There's a little bit of crossover. And Elena, of course, has done the podcast many times and is a wonderful I'm person. just waiting for the Matt Moran, Maggie B crossover. Oh, hold on, wait a second. Yeah, that happens. That, that, that's already happening. That happens. <laughs> that Maggie happens. B will be in to do some virtues <laughs> shortly. Um, and also. The, oh, and a tip. If you don't know, the way to Maggie's heart is verjuice and butter. Yeah. More butter, more verjuice. You got her. You got her. That's it. You're in. Yeah. Um, it's like it's like a bit like Gary though. They work mm. out very quickly. There were the number of dishes tonight that included crackling. Was there a lot there, of were, crackling? there was a, there was a fair bit of crackling in that middle section after the second montage. There were oh, three or four dishes crackling. in a row with crackling. There was the bow. There was the actual pork belly. True. Yeah. There was there was a run of and that was with the guy was like, oh, we don't know if Gary's like, I don't know if we'll put him through. And Matt and George are going, bit There's more crackling, crackling here. Mm-hmm. Bit more crackling. And it's like. Play to your audience. Smart. I like the calculator. I like that. Because you've got to go in. There's lots of thinking there. And and just quietly as well, wasn't it good to see Elena on TV? Oh, my gosh. I know. Well, they're all special and they're all wonderful. But It's Elena. Elena's and our MasterChef. And then Master there was Chef. Kate. Elena's you know, our MasterChef. see enough Kate. Kate's enough. awesome, but Elena's our MasterChef. Yeah. Um, I like Adam Lior. I like his Adam's Twitter awesome. feed. Adam. He, he, we had this awesome tweet last week where he was like, you know, oh, all the shit. Like fancy restaurant desserts taste the same. I'm like hashtag fucking first world problems. <laughs> I don't know 
job, not you. Isn't that an issue? Don't you always yeah. find that's the problem? Perhaps what you need to do, Adam, is just go have yourself a nice fried ice cream at your local, ch- local Chinese takeaway. No, what he needs to do is go. down your palate a bit. What he does is he goes and has a McFlurry. Yeah, has a McFlurry, <laughs> 30-cent cone. <laughs> KFC crusher. Where he goes? He's just got a buffet of desserts from fast food joint. One of those red rooster mousse. Yes, a frozen yogurt. <laughs> the one where you can put all the lollies and stuff in it. The whatever the the cup things that a Porto have. You know all of those. Mango pancake. No oh, mango pancake. That's a bit. That's a step up. That's fancy. A mango pancake's a step mm. up. You know, we love mango pancakes. Anyway, um, we're now going to welcome you. Mm. Into a special corner of the podcast. Do, 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 Ladies and gentlemen, do, 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 it's time do, 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 for Pop G Corner. Do, 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 now, we haven't actually told Ben we're doing this, but and I hope he likes it. But Ben Pop G um, is ridiculously hilarious on Twitter. <laughs> he is. And he was absolutely white hot on fire tonight. And, yeah. and our favourite, our favourite one of his tweets was, Sirens, he's I fire. wanted to apply for years too. But I'm waiting for a personal tragedy and or to be adopted by Italians. Yes. <laughs> I feel you, Ben. Oh, it was so good. I mean, yeah. it was it was legitimately just it does seem like you need to be if you're adopted by Italians, you're pretty much you're getting sorted. an apron. You could get on there, you could get on bake off, you're sorted. Antonio, what are you doing? Man, you, you could have got on this. Like, no. Antonio's nonna. Could have got him on the show. Oh, he, yeah, I hear you. Right, but... this is the thing. I mean, I know. You know, no. Antonio's bake off. Just let's move on. Okay, fine. We'll move, move on. on. I know why you want me to move on. Yes. Because next. Yes, Queen. I'll let you take it. So, I'd seen her promo and I was I was already wrapped. So here comes Kristen, you know, woman from South Australia, and I felt for her that you know self doubting, you know the the box you put in when you're a fat white woman or a fat woman even in the world, is is not, they don't expect a lot from you. Well, she went, fuck that, I'm pursuing my dreams, and boom, out of the kitchen. Explosion of honeycomb. And the... Tw- Presentation of an angel. And the twiddle of. Yes. My God, the twiddle of. Yes. Was she the one also who made the whiskey, the whiskey caramel? Yes. Yes, she was. So a bit of yeah. a shout out there to Eloise. Eloise, um, yeah. Who did notice, by the way, on, mm. on Twitter. And um, it's just like, you know, she got to walk up with Elena and like, like check. and the other chick, I forget her name, oh, the one that won about a couple of years ago. Sorry. Anyway, it wasn't <laughs> Elena. Oh, sorry, she, she went um, So walking up and then she's presenting and, you know, she has a bit of a tear and that's fine because, you know, like, you know, it's good to see a fatty cry on TV because, rad fatty I should say, is because like we're not, you know, there's a stereotype of the, the fat happy person. Yeah. And it's like, no, we can be emotional too. We're just normal human beings. And this one's just fucking skilled as fuck. Yas, queen. Kristen, yas. Yas. Anyway, so, no, she's awesome. She and is. I think she's, she's a very quick favourite of, like, almost everybody on yes. the planet. Um, we had a couple of other interesting interesting dishes tonight. Uh, mm. Wallaby. Yeah. Uh, oh, going to three forty-two Wallaby Way or whatever it is from <laughs> Finding Nemo. <laughs> and Wallaby, Wallaby appeared, um, or as as our, our friend said, Robert from Bake Off last season. What's that, Skip? You're delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I hope it's not one of those endangered ones. <laughs> no, I hope not. I really hope not. Um, <laughs> it's a spotted quoll. <laughs> we had. <laughs> Gosh, what a her shtick. She looks like this, like, nice, put-together, kind of slightly retro chick, and her shtick is serving up endangered species. <laughs> Next round, quokka. <laughs> quokka, this... quokka souffle. <laughs> she finds this, like, arrow dart frog from, like, like someplace that she's serving one of the green, like... One of the green tree, bell, bell tree frogs from Homebush. <laughs> <laughs> Fricassee of... <laughs> endangered species and all we get for the rest of the series regardless of what the actual ingredients are is somehow she works in endangered species into her she's like Dwight Schrute she's just working endangered species <laughs> into everything steak. I can arrange the giraffe steaks you know <laughs> so sorry we don't endorse that at all it's just no, we hilarious. don't. it's just funny um. so we then had um 
a couple of interesting, other interesting ones. We had double Indian dishes. What yes. was interesting about that was after the first one, they went heavy on the first <laughs> one. Like, this is the best Indian one I've had. ever had in the MasterChef kitchen. Cut to about 40 minutes later <laughs> when the next guy makes Indian and they're like, this is really amazing. And it's like they had nowhere to go. <laughs> they went too hard too soon. It's too soon, George. It's too soon. And and I was I sort of said to you at one point, what happens if the first 24 come in and they're all amazing? <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, um, you start battling off, you know, like they then have to like, you know, like in boxing where you can like fight for the crown, you can fight for the them, apron. They drag them all back in and go, sorry, we're going to take that apron off you. Um, you're not as good as we thought you were. Um mm. They so they had the two lots of Indian, both of those yep. got through. Um, and then we did sort of see what happens when when they get stuck yes. because we had the meat man, right? So and he, he had to get through, so he appears and he makes this amazing steak, it was oh. perfect. And he cuts he it up. He was cool, he was calm, he just knew his shit. the miso butter, the everything oh. else that he had there, and cuts it all up. And the first, you're in 100%. You're in 100%. And I just got out of, I could just see, just in the reflection of, of Matt's face, <laughs> in the corner of his eye, I could see frantically a producer waving over the camera going, no more aprons, we've given too many. And Matt <laughs> goes, you know what? It's good. It's just not perfect. I want to see you cook it's again. Too much fat on on on. Meat. And by the time he finishes, the others are going. Oh yeah, it's far too fatty. Far far too fatty. Feel that on your palate. Feel that on your palate. Oh, it's far you far too fatty. Palate. It was far too fatty. No, no. Producer. They needed to have somebody go through to the next night. I also just think they really wanted another steak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they're just like, look, well, can we just do it again? Can yeah, we just like. Okay, tomorrow we've got like a lot of dessert people. We're going to need a main because it's going to be about lunchtime. We're going to start getting hungry. Yeah, we don't want all desserts. No. So they needed to sort of balance that out a little yeah. bit. Um, but he needs to get through because then I want to like use the gift card. Yeah, yes, you do, you, you do need that. Um, we also had, for, for, for me, one of the my favourite moments of the night was the making your own phyllo pastry oh, from scratch. Shit. Now, if you're a fan of Bake Off, you have watched, and, you, and you've watched Great British and you've watched Great Australian Bake Off, okay? You know how fucking hard it is to watch Philo. Now, it was good that she had a pasta machine to use, but hells, the, Philo is finicky as fuck. We've seen that with Svogliatelli and we've seen that, um, oh, where was it? Who was it? Was it Sue that was making it in Turkey? Yeah. Yeah, or Mel, one of the two. Over there making it and there's this, like, professional whipping it around and he, out comes Huda. Well, isn't she fucking brilliant? It's just incredible. And it looked mm-hmm. so damn good. And she's a community service worker, so represent, yeah. It was it was an amazing sort of dessert and, and the second I saw it I was like, no, no, that has to go through. And the presentation, you throw rose petals and friggin' pistachio nuts on something and I'm like, hello. Yeah, just everything. Just anything really. Mm. Like Beck Podgy, Ben's, you know, mm. other half. Uh, put it succinctly when she says, I want that all around my mouth In and around, around my, my mouth, mouth hole. hole. Um, <laughs> very appropriate. Um, mm. And we finished the night off with, with Aldo. Oh, Aldo. Now, this is when- now, everybody online, including yeah. the MasterChef account, it must be said, were mm. like, I legitimately just thought he was an over-enthusiastic support for somebody. Yes. Because he was in every shot. He, he was. was. in the background of everyone's It's like bit. jumping down with the nonna. She's like, yeah. Everyone like, thought oh, he was like I, the I, nonna's a relative of the nonna. Mm, no, turns nah. out he's his own contestant. Mm. And he was amazing. Oh, like my The gosh. octopus. Like, he pulled the octopus out of the bag. Applause. He kind of reminds me of a cross between... Um, Oh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Francesco Gabbani and oh, the dude from France came out on the golf cart. You'll never be cool. Sebastian Tellier. Sebastian Tellier. Yes, there's going to be a lot of Eurovision, Eurovision references. references. And by well. the way, we are podcasting Eurovision, Eurovision too, well. <laughs> so get ready for that. Um, but you know, he is a bit, a bit of a cross there. And as everyone pointed out, he looked a lot. He looked a lot like Salt Bay. Oh, he did. All he needed to do. And he kind of did too when he sprinkled the cheese <coughs> yes. over his puss. Yes. So, again, there's, there's only, Octopus. he goes, there's only two ingredients in my head. I'm like, octo and puss. puss. <laughs> so. 
Now, we do need to give a special mention to Azerbaijan, who was happy to get in because it really upped the Eurovision <laughs> feel. To the... It was good to see your, uh, Azerbaijan get in there and, and maybe some votes coming from their country. <laughs> exactly. No, wait, we're mixing nights. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then also we had uh, a woman who I thought was fantastic because I could use a Scottish accent or, like, bugger a Scottish accent who's, like, a Mexican background, but she's got a really sc- strong Scottish accent. Yeah, I, I can't wait for the Scottish accent. <laughs> Look, if you haven't listened to the show before, what you're about to find out is Christy's accents are uncanny. Mm, it's like you're in the country. Yeah, it's it's always like you're in a country. It's like oh, not necessarily we're in Scotland new. Not, not necessarily the one she's doing the impression of. <laughs> but you're in a country somewhere. Mm. Often South Africa, even when she you know when she's trying to do Scottish. Well, who the hell knows what a South African accent sounds like anyway? That is the best Portuguese I've ever heard. <laughs> And you know who else is cool? The dude from, um, oh, I think his name was Mate. He, mm-hmm. he was the um, guy from a, a nomadic tribe, oh, yes. Asian tribe. And he's... He was the guy who walked in, and was like, walked in and went, I'm going to get an apron and then produced a cleaver. Yeah. I would have given, <laughs> given him a fucking apron too. Yes, but he came up with the whole salty, fragrant and fatty. Yeah, fatty. <laughs> yes, a new fragrance. Yes. So it was, look, it was a really good, very positive... Yep. First night of MasterChef. Loving and, the positive vibe. And it's really good to see because, look, it can have nights and it can have times where it doesn't do that. Let's yeah. hope desperately that the producers don't make the mistake they made last year where yeah. episode three or four, I think it was, they went for the double episode oh. and just about killed everybody. Um, and if it is this Thursday and they do that, we're going to be fucked. You know why? Eurovision. Eurovision as well. Oh. So, you know. I hope the producers are clever and don't double barrel an episode like oh, they did last time. Just spread out to Friday. Just, just stretch it, guys. It works so much better when you stretch them out. You need something to do on a Friday night. Cause like, yeah, you yeah. need something. Hashtag <laughs> suburban life. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag 30s. Anyway, so it was a really good positive episode. I think there's going to be a lot of really good food being done if this is the standard yeah. that you're getting in the audition. And I like that there's, you know, it, there seems to be a reinvigorated energy to the show as well. Um, bringing it, like, now that they've got that history, they've got a legacy hmm. to live up to. They obviously knew that they were leading up to, um, as we all know, because it's no spoiler that they're serving um, Charles, Prince of Wales. Yep. So, you know, that's coming up. And so there's going to be a lot of, I think, freshness to yeah. what we're going to see. And, and as much as it's a TV trope to have him on, mm. having Gordon Ramsay on, is going to be really intriguing. Well, I'm pretty sure we called this last year we when did, we actually. said Marco Pierre White yeah. is not available, no. so they'll pull in Gordon, Gordon Ramsay. Ramsay. We talked about this last year. We thought mm-hmm. that Ramsay would probably be on, so tick. Yes. We're pretty good at this. Looking forward to seeing Shannon Bennett tomorrow. Yep, it's good to yeah. see Shannon. We haven't seen Shannon yet, so that'll no. be good. Um, there will be – now, the, the, the next game card for drinking game will uh-uh. be out next week because, you know, we've got to let it breathe a little bit um, mm. and we've got to let everyone recover. But the next week's game card will be a doozy. Thank you. The amount of requests I've had. <laughs> uh, the next five weeks of, gar- of cards are sorted. However, I do have a little game for you for Twitter, which is something inspired by a meme on the internet. But I thought if we were to draw a pentacle and place the three ingredients in it to invoke uh, one of the previous MasterChef contestants, what would those three ingredients be and who would they, like, invoke? Yeah. I for mean- example, a bottle of whiskey. A bottle of whiskey and a, a bottle, bottle of whiskey. whiskey. Eloise! Eloise. <laughs> uh, that's simple. I mean, you know, and, and ice cream. Yes. Doesn't really matter what else you put in there, but ice cream. cream. And, a, and, a and some sake. Sake. <laughs> ben Ungerman. Ben Ungerman. <laughs> so, and a little statue of Gaston. Um, <laughs> yes. DVD of Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> um, no, again, I think it's, it's, it's a really, it looks like a really fun group of people too. Mm-hmm. Um Hopefully, I'm loving the diversity. Like I know a lot of people talk about, um, you know, like tokenism and that kind of thing. It's good to see a TV show where you cannot say any of this is tokenism. It's all about what people call a meritocracy. You know, people getting in on their merit, but seeing diversity of culture, diversity of body shapes, diversity of ages as well. Mm. So it's just good to see people coming in with just their passion for foods, showing that it just brand like you know goes across. It does. It stretches. Cultural divide. Across cultural divide. Brings people together, much like Eurovision. It is the Eurovision MasterChef. It is. It really is the Eurovision MasterChef. And again, this is Eurovision week, so there'll be more references to it. You know what the it. first song's going to be? Mm. Sexy, sexy, sexy mother nana. Oh, oh. 
I walked into that one, ladies and gentlemen. I walked into that one. Sexy so, mother nutter is shaking her ass, shaking her ass. <laughs> so that's sort of the introduction to this to this series. Now, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. If we not, we if did. not, we don't really care. We had fun. Um, <laughs> Hopefully you'll come back for the next episode. Now, we're still working out exactly what the schedule's going to be. It's likely to be three a week, possibly two, likely to be three. Yeah. We haven't finalised that. Depends on what the format is this year of, of episodes. So we're going to sort of feel it out as we go mm-hmm. um, before we fall into the groove. But you'll know what our regular groove is very early on yeah. once we know what our groove is. <laughs> regular groove is fairly early on. Yeah. Um, Please keep up with the interactions on Twitter. We really do love hearing from you. We've also got Facebook. We've also got the YouTube channel. So this is also available on YouTube and on Spotify and look everywhere, really. Yeah. Uh, we're everywhere. We're flowers. We're everything you want us to be. Um, <laughs> pigeons. Pigeons, yeah. I can I can attach an Billboards. episode. Billboards. I, I can get a wax cylinder together in a, in a bit of a time if you give me some notice. Um, I can knock something up in fibro in five minutes. I can minutes. write things in ohms. Is that... Like, relevant for the Celts out there, the I, Druids amongst us. I can write, do you want to play a game in Japanese? Does that count? Yeah, there we go. International audience snagged. Especially since we're working with a drinking game. Yes. Works perfectly <laughs> for me. Game of Oshima Show, everybody. Game of Oshima Show. And with that, that's about your lot for tonight, and we will be back again for the next episode. Up until then, I'm still Chris. And I'm still Christy. And we will catch you all next episode. Ciao.